Hello, Michael here with another Renderman 22 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the AA Ocean shader, which we're going to be using to create some realistic looking water. So the first thing we're going to do is create a polygon plane. This is what our water is going to be made out of, or what we're going to apply the shader to. Um, we're just going to change the size of this guy as well, just to 100 on all axes. Um, and I'll disable the grid. All right. Um, now, the reason I've changed it to 100, and if you're following the tutorial and you want to do the same settings as I do, uh, you want to have your plane set to be the same scale as mine because the parameters that we use for the displacement, the, the way that we make the, the water be higher or lower or whatever, is based on the geometry because it's a displacement. So um, if you want to use the same settings as me, make sure you've got your plane set to the same size. Then we're going to go over to the Render Man tab and we're going to apply a Pixar surface shader using that button with the plane selected. We'll jump into the Hypershade editor and we'll just map that out. And we'll also hit tab and type in displace and we'll use a Pixar displace and we'll actually run that into the displacement shader uh, of the shading group for Pixar Surface. So we want to then hit tab and get an AA Ocean shader and we'll hit 3 on that on the keyboard to open it up and we're going to run the out displacement RGB into the displacement vector um, of the displace node and now we will make the plane look like water. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that the diffuse gain is set to zero. Then we'll go down to glass, we'll set the refraction gain up to 100, reflection gain up to 100, and then we'll go into advanced and we'll reset the refractive index to 1.33 because that's the um, index of refraction of water, I think, off the top of my head. <laughs> um, so we won't be able to render this yet because we don't have any um, lights in the scene. So uh, the best way to, to sort of block these sorts of things out is to have a um, dome light in with an HDRI image. So I'm just going to pop one of those in and in the attribute editor for it we're going to open up an HDRI image. Um, I'm just going to use this one here. Something with a blue sky and maybe a lighter back, uh, ground is good um, just because um, it tends to be a bit hard when because you're looking through the water. So if it's just all white, the water will just constantly look grey. Just for realism, there's always a sky above water unless it's underground. Um, <laughs> so it's sort of easier to sort of uh, logically look at it that way. All right, so with all that hooked up, we should just be able to do an IPR now. And you get something that looks like this, which is a complete mess. That's fine. That's usually the way it works. So we will jump into the Hypershade editor. And I'll just select that AI Ocean shader parameter. And then here we can make some adjustments to the AI Ocean shader. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to change that velocity to be 1. I'm going to change the ocean scale to be 10. Um, essentially, this means that the ocean scale is 10 meters by 10 meters. Don't take that as absolute truth. It is what it looks like. It's all relative. So if you put a tiny boat in there, then the ocean's obviously massive. If you put a massive boat in there, then the ocean is obviously tiny. So it's all relative, but this is sort of just a way to get your head around it. Um, the resolution is the resolution of the displacement shader. When you're blocking these things out, keep the resolution low, and then if you now then want to see what it looks like with detail, you can bump it up. Um, at the moment, I think the resolution on 3 is 256 by 256, um, and it goes up from there to 7, which is uh, 2048 or 2K. So just on 3 for the moment uh, will do the trick. Also, the wind direction. Now, our plane is squared with the with the zero point in the world so it's at 90 degrees to the x-axis um, or y-axis depending which way you're looking at it so currently the wind is coming across from corner to corner we don't really want that because it tends to make it hard to sort of deal with the um, the waves because they're going from corner to corner so it all sort of waves 
unusually you'll just try it and you'll see what i mean uh, so i always just set the wind direction to zero um, dampening is just dampening the wind direction slightly that's usually fine wind line set to one means that the wind is always going to be coming 100 percent from the origin point which is zero degrees so if we ipr that again we'll get something that's a little bit more calm as you can see so Talking again about scale, this could be a small bit of water. Um, with Looking at the background, it does look like a small piece of water. Or it could be a massive piece of water. If I just put a tiny little boat in there, it would look like a big ocean. So think about that um, when you are thinking about the scale as well. Um, and obviously, the detail is pretty low at the moment, and that's to do with the resolution. All right, so the first thing I'm going to adjust is the chop amount and the wave height. So the wave height is pretty obvious, it's the height of the waves. Chop amount is how choppy the peaks of each of the little chops are. So these little areas here would be more peaked with the chop amount increased. So if I IPR that again, you can see much choppier. Velocity is the, it has to do with the size of the waves essentially. Um, a higher velocity means you're gonna get fewer waves but they're gonna be bigger um, and then vice versa. So we could say set this to five. And you'll see that we've got essentially two big waves. Again, tiny ship, big waves. Um, so we could set this to two. With displacements, you'll have to re-render every time you change something because displacements don't update automatically uh, in RenderMan um, and a lot of other renderers for that matter. Um, so yeah, we can set this to, we'll set it to five because that kind of looks cool. And when I show you foam, it'll be a little bit easier to see. So it looks like in rel relation to the scene, we've got a, a wave that's about probably one or two meters by two meters. Uh, wave speed is a multiplier for the speed of the waves. So at 1.0, if you're animating this, um, then this, uh, that will affect the speed, obviously. You can key your current time into your timeline. So you could key zero into frame one and then, I don't know, um, 10 into frame 100 and that's i think that's 10 seconds over the course of 100 frames so obviously that wouldn't be quite right you want to do it at 24 or 30 multiples but just for the sake of argument um and then repeat time obviously how long it takes for it to repeat um cut off is going to smooth out the waves so i can show you that if i set, it's sort of relative to the um wave height and the velocity so if i set it to say higher than the wave height it's going to be really blobbed out as you can see and if I set it lower to like two see it backs off quite a bit I'll just bring the so you can see the difference there that's the original and then we could set it to something like 0.5 if we just wanted to make a slight adjustment yeah, as you can see so that's the original and that's with the cutoff. I'm not going to use cutoff for this one. I just want it to be all choppy. All right, so that is essentially all there is to it. Now, there is another parameter, the foam parameter. Um, now, I think I have the foam <laughs> done correctly. I'll show you how to do it. Uh, there's a couple of things in the docs which um, I've tested a couple of different ways and they don't necessarily seem to make a huge difference. So again, we need to go into the Hypershade Editor. And I'm just going to clean that up. All right, so we're actually going to need to create a new shader and assign it. So I'll, I'll actually just jump back in here for a second and we'll right click here and we'll use Pixel Layer Surface and they'll create Pixel Layer Surface Shader. Um, so let's get all that separated. So we've already got our displacement um, shader created and the AA Ocean's also um, connected to that as well. Um, it's just hidden at the moment. So I'm just going to pull that off the initial shading group that we had it uh, attached to and apply it to the new uh, Pixar surface. And we can just delete that. Remap all that out so we've got all the AA Ocean shader, um, the AA Ocean shader nodes showing again. And then with Pixar layer surface, we'll have the two different layers. You can add more, but we're just going to use two for now. The base layer and a layer one. So, and they're backwards. So I'm going to rename those so it's easy to follow. This one's going to be called water. And layer two is going to be called foam. Making it obvious which is which. So in the water, again, we want to 
disable the diffuse channel because it's going to be the water and we want to go to glass and we want to enable it increase the refraction reflection refraction and set the refractive index to 1.33 in foam we want to make sure that diffuse um, lobe is enabled we're going to set the color to be white because it's foam which tends to be white or kind of yellowy depending on how clean the beach is um, you can increase the roughness if you want I generally won't and and that's it you can also add specularity to it as well it tends to get a little bit too sparkly for my liking it's generally okay um, as is so we'll also need to enable the foam layer if you rendered it right now it would all just be white because the foam is it doesn't have a mask set to it so we need to connect a mask up first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a bump pixar bump and we're going to run the input in into that and then we're going to run into the foam just expand that out with the three key and we'll type in bump and we want um diffuse bump normal and then we can just hit two to make that small actually we'll hit one because we don't really need to look at that okay so at this point it wants us to use a pixar remap node i found that it just doesn't work so we're going to use a remap color node uh, which is just a maya one and run it into there and then we can set the input ranges to negative five and input max to five uh, with the pixar one you just can't do that the maximum and minimum are one uh, respectively re regardless of whether normalized or not so i'm not sure if i'm doing something wrong there but this will work so we can just do that and then we can run an ipr okay so here is our render with everything hooked up and there is essentially no change as you can see uh, so we need to make some adjustments to the foam parameters um, It kind of works opposite to how you'd think it does. So if you decrease the Brightness to 0.8 and the gamma to 0.2 you'll start to see it um, So you can see the little bits of foam there sitting on top of the wave and they sort of tend to float around where the peaks of the chops are now those are diffuse and they're set to white so if you want something that's a little bit closer you can also adjust the color value of the shader um, i'm just going to stick with this white the white it's not totally realistic it's probably a little bit harsh but um, you can sort of balance it out with the brightness as well the higher the brightness is the more bright it is obviously so you can go quite bright to the point where it starts to cover it and it doesn't really look like water so sort of for this 0.8 with the gamma set to 0.2 is pretty good and you can adjust the gamma the higher the gamma the less visible it is as you can see so you just get a little bit something subtle there or you can go a little bit more obvious and like i said you can add some specularity i'd make it pretty um, rough specularity but this will work and it tends to be better if you've got another light apart from just the HDRI. So I'll just quickly add a light in as well so you can sort of see it a bit better. Alrighty, so I've just added in warm light there and as you can see that makes it look a lot better. So, so now as we're getting close, as you can see, it sort of looks a little bit garbage because the low resolution of the um, bump map. So let's quickly jump in and change that bump map. Um, uh, sorry of the displacement so we'll make it five and as you can see as it starts to render up it's already looking a thousand times better um, the detail is just night and day basically as you move it around now obviously you have to balance this out with what you've done with the foam parameters um, that might be a bit harsh now you might want to change the gamma so it's a little bit softer or something like that. That's all up to you. And obviously the you can use the shader color as well. Something maybe a little bit uh, more like a ivory color um, or sort of a slightly more off-white or with a little bit of very, very subtle blue and it might be more what you're after. It depends on the lighting setup and everything like that. Um, but essentially that's the basics of how it works and how to um, hook it up. 
Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it is just a matter of playing with the settings and figuring out what you want your water to look like. Um, using a reference is really good for this sort of thing because you tend to just be wandering around in the dark otherwise. So find some reference footage of some water that you want to sort of mimic and go off that. Otherwise, you're, you're, not, you're never really going to have a clear idea what you're trying to get out of out of your visualization anyway um, so yeah if you did like the tutorial though make sure you click the like button so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed for more content every week usually i will be doing uh, new tutorials for any man and the like um, if you want to follow me on instagram you can do so link in the description you can also follow on facebook to keep up with all of the tutorials as they come out that's it for now though, thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.